Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with Jordan Fan TV. Back at you on the video the content is video. Go smash that like button. Content is channel. Go ahead, subscribe, man. Look, I'm out here in Michigan, so you see anything Detroit Lions in the background like that. Um, my brother in law basement, big time Detroit Lions fan, even when he was losing, everything like that. Big time fan, right? Um, so yeah, so that's that's why you see that in the background, all right? Um, second of all, Merry Christmas, man. You know, I hope you get to spend with some family, uh, watch some, maybe some, watch some NBA today, you know, you feel me? Um, but we're gonna talk about this Ravens versus Falcons game, Ravens against the playoffs, um, with this win. So we're gonna talk about offense, defense, um, the good and the bad on both sides of the ball. Give off some standout performers and maybe talk about some coaching things as well. All right, cool. So look, let's start off with the standout performers. All right, um, first Gus Edwards, right? Eleven carries, ninety-nine yards. Um, big time game from him. It's been J.K. Dobbins the last couple of weeks. J.K. still had a good game though. He only had about twelve carries. I think he had like fifty some yards, or so like around like four and a half yards to carry, something like that for J.K. So he was still good today. But Gus had a couple of big runs today. Like I said, 99 yards, very, very close to 100, obviously. Um, so he was good. Um, this, Ravens, this Ravens run game is picking up steam. The passing game still hasn't been very, very good. But the, this offense, as far as um, running the ball, is picking up steam. All right. Uh, secondly, Ravens offensive line, they are blocking their tails off, bro. They are creating these run lanes. Obviously, guys like J.K. and Gus are doing their thing to extend the lanes and you know make moves on defenders and things like that. But... These guys up front are creating that initial wave and getting those guys um, where they need to go. So, uh, those are my two standout performers on offense. We'll go Gus Edwards. We'll go with the Ravens offensive line as a whole, right? All right. Now, defensively, I've got two players on here as well. Roquan Smith, 15 tackles, 7 solos, 1 TFL. All over the field, right? Now, when I did the Ravens versus Falcons game preview, I said, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen are guys that I want to name. Right, and I'm, I'm naming half of them here. Patrick Queen didn't have a bad game. He had a big stop on the fourth down um, near the goal line. It was him and uh, Brent Urban that, that bust through the gap. So didn't have a bad game, nothing like that. But name of Roquan Smith here. All right, um, Roquan, big time game, big time performance. Uh, he's been nothing but excellent since he's been a Raven. Um, and he's not just a guy who stuffs the stat sheet and you don't really feel the impact. You feel the impact of his of him all over the field. Right, the Falcons wanted to run the ball. They had some success here and there. But for the most part, the Ravens stopped that up, and the, the Falcons really couldn't get that run game going um, too much. Okay, cool. Second player I want to mention: Marlon Humphrey, bro. Marlon Humphrey, seven tackles as, as a corner, good stuff. Um, did get some passes completed on him. It's life, you know. Drake London's a really, really good young, talented receiver. Um, but big news: the fourth fumble, right? One fruit punch, right? We haven't seen it in a long time, um, but it's back. It's back. It's back. Made it made a big time appearance. <laughs> the Falcons uh, convert a fourth down. Marlon Humphrey punched that ball out. Big time play right there. So that was good to see. So those are my standout performers for this game. We got um, excuse me, Gus Edwards, Raves offensive of line. We got Marlon Humphrey. We got Roquan Smith. Those are my guys. Please give me your standout performance in the comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking from that game yesterday. All right, cool. Now. Offense. Let's talk about offense. Let's talk about the good side. Like I said, running the football was really good. The Ravens are in the playoffs. They're gonna have to play to their strength with running the football. Um, the run game is ticking up. All that time, all that problems that they was having before, it seems to be going away a little bit as far as running the football. Right now, um, before it seemed like they really couldn't run the ball unless Lamar Jackson was there. They're doing it without him a little bit now. When he gets back, which I can't wait for him to get back. Um, it should get even better because then he's going to help Lamar's going to help the running game as from a quarterback standpoint, and he's going to help the passing game overall as well. Obviously, all right, cool. Now let's talk about the passing a little bit. Um, Tyler Huntley was okay, right? I think he had like 120 yards, something like that. Not, nothing too crazy. He did miss a couple guys, but he was okay for the most part. All right. Um, Mark Andrews got involved, um, things like that. Nice catch down the side, nice throw by Tyler Huntley. Uh, big play to Sammy Watkins down the sideline that he scrambled, you know, evaded, made uh, made something out of nothing. Because really wasn't much there, but him saying Watkins got open, things like that. All right, cool. Um, anybody else from office I want to mention? No, not really. So, all right, the bad side of the offense, okay? 
I still don't see enough for the wide receivers to get involved. Um, Demarcus Robinson didn't make a, great, a good catch in the end zone. Um, well, I guess that's good. Demarcus Robinson making that catch in the end zone. Ravens talked all offseason about throwing back shoulders and jump balls and things like that in the in the red zone to help make this team a more efficient offense. And this played in Demarcus Robinson like the first time we've seen it and we're at the end of the season. All right. So that's like a good and bad thing. Like it's good that they did it, but bad is taking so long to see it, right? Because you could have thrown this ball to Bateman, you could have thrown this ball to somebody like other guys as well, you know. That we just haven't seen it throughout the season. Um the passing game still struggles. It's still to me it, it, it it's not fluid. Um I so like I said, brother in law's a Lions fan, right? Lions got Lions got beat pretty bad yesterday, um, for, for most of the game, but their offense was still pretty good. Um watching their offense versus the Ravens offense and just how they could be more spread out, more explosive, more dynamic. And it's not just because they you know they, the better receivers. I'm not it's not just because of that. it's the bit it's the play calling as well, right? Um just really dynamic play calling that he have and just watching their game, they're watching the Ravens game, it's like dang, like one offense looks modern, one offense like it's from the nineteen fifties. So um it is what it is with that though. You know, can't really do much about that. But you know, I had to complain about anything for the game for the offense. They the passing game didn't really get going enough for me. You know, but it's okay. This is one of those games where they probably should have had to run the ball. It was cold as hell. Falcons aren't very good at stopping the run. So hey, the Ravens did what they need to do to win. So we'll leave it at that, okay? Now defense. Defense on the good side, right? They started the game out dominant. They took away the Falcons' main strength, which is running the football. They got a couple runs here and there. <laughs> Like I said in the game preview, Tyler Algier is not a bad player, and he showed that. He was pretty good. So, uh, they, they take away the Falcons' main strength, but they still popped up a little bit. But, um, I was really impressed with the defensive line. I was impressed with the, uh, the linebacker core, um, as far as stopping the run and things like that. All right, so that was, that was the good side for the Ravens defense. They did what they needed to do versus this Falcons team that isn't as talented as them, that isn't as good as them. So, okay, great. Bad side. It doesn't matter either side of the half, whether it's the end of the second quarter, end of the fourth quarter. This this Ravens defense, something clicks, and they become a bad defense. End of the first half, Ravens up 14-0, dominating the game. All right, cool. Get the stop at the two-minute drill. Let's go on the halftime 14-0. The Ravens can't get a stop, right? Really, the Falcons get a touchdown that's called back because of a hold. I believe Brandon Stevens was being held by... Um, one of the Falcons wide receivers, right? Uh, maybe might be tick attack. Really, really could have been legitimate. You know, it's all up to your opinion and, and a, a viewpoint on it, right? Point being, the Ravens let the Falcons drive all the way down the field at the end of the game. I mean, ended the half at the two minute drill. Like they've done it every other team. They cannot be an elite defense and give up these points at the end of the half at the end of the game. That has got to stop. That has got to change. I don't know what changes. The coverage gets softer. Uh, uh, you know, you stop playing as aggressive. I don't know. And what, what's really hurting is now, I said the D-line was good on the run game. On the passing game, I'm not seeing Justin Houston. I'm not seeing JPP. I'm not seeing Owe. You guys got to get to the passer. We know they're throwing the football. Get to the passer. You got to get there, right? Um, but Fox end up scoring at the end of the half, make it 14-3. Now, the big problem I have with that is, right, now going into the second half, the Falcons had momentum in the third quarter. They come on doing the same thing. Now they, they confident. Like, okay, we had success. We can play with these guys. Let's go. Now it doesn't lead to much. The Falcons only get two more field goals in the, in the rest of the game. You know, Ravens win 17-9. But it's just the simple fact that this defense couldn't really shut the door on these guys, right? Um, I want to talk about Drake London. Drake London had, I got it written down here. Seven catches for 96 yards. And he's a really, really talented player. He went number five in the draft or something like that. Like like his jersey number. Um, he went really high. But uh, I just felt like a lot of times, several times he went off and made great plays. He did. But other times, like, it was kind of easy for him. You know what I mean? So, this Raven defense is really, really good. It is. But the last two minutes of the second half, I mean, uh, the second quarter, the last two minutes of the fourth quarter, they change. I don't know why. To me, that's gotta be a culture thing. Like I like Mike, I like Mike McDonald. I always give him credit when he deserves it. But we gotta be honest. If this same thing keeps happening over and over and over again, that's gotta be something with the coaching. It's gotta be because the players are doing their job right all the way up to that point. 
then we get to the end of the end of the half, end of the fourth quarter, all of a sudden it like, it like a completely different defense. That's gotta change. Okay. Now, let's talk about some coaching stuff, right? Um, I kind of talk about the defense and Mike McDonald changed the end of the half. Things like that. That's, that's, that's really a coaching complaint about I'm being honest. Offensively, I will say this. Tyler Huntley is not Lamar Jackson. And Greg Roman keeps calling design quarterback runs. Now, I've seen Tyler Huntley get hit way harder than I've ever seen Lamar Jackson get hit constantly, right? I, I, you know, my, Lamar gets out of bounds, dodges a defender, gets down, whatever. Tyler Huntley thinks he's he's really a running back. Like he will, he gets hit up on guys and he's not slide very well. He tried to slide versus the Falcons and it looked terrible. Like he didn't know how to slide. I remember back in the day when it was um, RG three was playing for the uh, you know the Redskins at the time, but he was playing for them and he was just like yeah you know he just, they were like yeah he just really doesn't know how to slide. I was like what you don't know how to slide? You're a quarterback. You don't know how to slide. But that's what it looks like with Tyler Huntley. He just doesn't know how to slide. And the fact that they keep putting in him, like I said, the, he got out of the game for the Steelers. You keep putting your quarterback in harm's way. Stop doing that. Stop it. Even when Lamar comes back. I know they're going to run the ball with Lamar sometimes. I get that. But it doesn't have to be so much. The run game is going with J.K. and Gus. Let those guys carry it. Don't, excuse me. Don't King's taking the mitts. Don't Justin Hill. Don't Justin Hill the bitch. Excuse me. Stop running the ball with the quarterback so much. I don't have a complaint about the passing game because nothing's going to change. It's Greg Roman's offense. The passing game's not going to be good. So what can I say about that that's going to change it? All right? They, they elevated Andy Isabella to John Harbaugh. Yes, now, now this is for you. You elevated Andy Isabella, and he plays all special teams the entire game. I had guys telling me that Andy Isabella and Sammy Watkins were quote-unquote weapons and upgrades that the Ravens are trying to sabotage Lamar Jackson so that Tyler Huntley could have better weapons. And these weapons, Sammy Watkins had one target and one catch, which wasn't even a design route, right? It was a route bounce that, you know, he stayed alive, good play by him. And that the other weapon, Andy Isabella, <laughs> he plays special teams. His play of the game is knocking a guy on special teams. Now, great play, he flipped the dude on special teams, good play. But Andy Isabella should not have been brought here to play uh, uh, special teams. To run down on kickoffs and hit a guy. That's not why Andy, Andy Isabella should be here. So that's why I keep saying it's a scheme issue. It don't matter who the Ravens put out there receiving. You know, I want to see Ben Vick and Shamar Bridges and guys like that. As long as John, I'm sorry, as long as John Harbaugh is going to uh, uh, hire and, and keep Greg Roman on staff, that's what we're going to see. And if they hire somebody just like Greg Roman next time, that will be what we're going to see again. The only hope is that they fire Greg Roman. And then get somebody new. Uh, somebody has, has new ideas, I should say, next season. Besides that, what am I complaining for? Because it's going to be the same thing. Right? Um, so, but anyway, that's your Ravens versus Falcons. Uh, that's my reaction. That's my thoughts about the game. Let me, like I said, let me know you're a stand-up performer. Let me know about the good and bad you saw from the game. And I'll talk about it in the comments, man. Once again, Merry, have a merry, merry Christmas, bro. It's your boy Gabe, which is on the Fan TV. I'm out.